What's the magic word, Aaron? Kimberly King interview, take one. Hardly anybody knows that I have a problem if they didn't know me uh, beforehand. But I look normal, I act normal, uh, but I'm not normal. The neurologists say that I'm probably about as good as I'll ever get, which means I'll always walk with a cane. If I fall down, I have to have somebody help get me up. I won't ever be strong enough to lift my kids. I have, I have, I have three children, and I uh, no. I have four children, three that are alive and one that's dead. Adriana was amazing. She could light up any room. She was a smile bug. She was just learning to ride her bike. She was super excited about entering kindergarten and being able to ride the yellow bus. On the fifth day at the hospital, she was pronounced brain dead. And um, then she died in my arms at 10.39. And uh, that was it. A mosquito killed my child in less than six days. My son and I were playing out in the front yard doing some work. We started getting uh, eaten up by mosquitoes. Probably about three days later, I started feeling like I had a bad case of the flu, and that's kind of when the nightmare started. I can very clearly remember when the doctor came in, because I couldn't talk. Uh, all I could do was listen. She told me I had West Nile virus. I had no idea that it existed. Uh, I had no idea that it could do what it did to a human being. And I certainly had no anticipation that I would spend the next year of my life in a bed and learning how to redo things that my children had recently learned how to do. When I was admitted to the hospital in Bloomington, my wife Roberta called my brother and said, if you want to see him before he dies, you better get on the next plane and get here. My legs were paralyzed, my arms were paralyzed. To stand up was excruciatingly painful. I almost kill you, it was so painful. I was out of work for seven months. When I went back to work, I could see patients for one hour, and then I had to go back home and go back to bed. I wasn't sure I was gonna survive. I wasn't sure I was gonna be able to go back to work at all. So the fact that I'm able to go back to work even if I can't do everything I used to be able to do uh, is really a blessing. I lived in the hospital from August 29, 2009 to February 28, 2010. I did another six months of rehab, learning how to, relearning how to walk and swallow and speak. The people that get sick tend to have permanent lifelong problems because of the illness. Only one of my lungs works, so I breathe at about 50% capacity. I have nerve damage throughout my extremities, which means I can't, I can't run. I can barely climb stairs. It's the sort of thing you never think will happen to you. I was perfectly healthy and it happened to me. It's non-discriminatory. And uh, once you get it, <clears throat> you know, you've got it. And there's nothing out there that stops what it does to you. Mosquitoes aren't mere annoyances anymore. They have devastating effects. Physically, emotionally, financially. Like for us, it, it six days in the hospital, it was $180,000 out of pocket. The economic impact of one person uh, getting West Nile and going through what I went through is, is pretty tremendous. And it's such a simple thing to take a few steps to avoid. We eliminate any breeding grounds. Mosquitoes only need an eighth of an inch of water to breed in. Two drops of water in a bottle cap or an overturned flower pot or something in the yard, that's where they breed. All you can do is, is protect yourself. Burying a child is the hottest thing in the world. How wonderful she would have been, what a great big sister she could have been. She was riding in a hearse to her final resting place rather than being on the big yellow school bus for her first day of school. She never got to experience life. I have a very strong faith in 
God only takes the best. He only gives you what you can handle. And he gave me a purpose in life. People really don't realize the potential problem for infectious diseases like West Nile until it comes home to them. You're either lucky like me and you get to live like this for the rest of your life or you're unlucky and you're dead. Just because it doesn't happen to everybody doesn't mean it's not a big deal. Just because it hadn't happened to you yet doesn't mean it's not going to happen to you next year. My name is Sean Lemoyne. I'm a business trial attorney. My name's Kimberly King. I live in Pembroke, Massachusetts. I'm Dr. Don Reed. I'm a colonorectal surgeon at Medical City, Dallas. My story's real. The other victim stories, they're real. Is it fearful? Yes, but it's real. You have to be vigilant. We have to take public health measures to try to prevent this disease from occurring. It's important for the public to play their part too and, and take personal responsibility. It, it needs to be done.